Lebanon is one of my favorite countries in the whole world, but unfortunately it's been hit with some hard times recently. In this series of videos, I wanna show you the good, the bad, and the ugly parts of Lebanon. One caveat is that this series was filmed in 2022, so I've updated some figures, but please bear that in mind. Good morning and welcome to Lebanon. I'm back here after visiting in 2019 during the revolution. <laughs> And when I first came, actually, it was kind of the kickoff of the economic crisis that Lebanon is now going through. And I'm going to explain a little bit about that in this video. During this series here, I also want to show you some of the rest of Lebanon and show you the beautiful scenery, the food, the people here. But I also think as soon as you come here, you notice what's happening to them economically. So I, I do need to explain that first before we go and see the rest of the country. I'm also here with my friend Alex. Hello, mate. <laughs> He's going to help me, well, shoot around the country, but also we're going to get out and explore some of it. It's going to be good. Got a lot to see, got a lot to do. See what we can cook out in such a short amount of time. And you're now a millionaire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the first time in my life that I've ever been anywhere, and I can genuinely say I'm a millionaire. <laughs> First, I'm going to go exchange some money right now because although the official exchange rate is 1,500 Lebanese pounds to the dollar, the black market exchange rate is 27,000 to the dollar right now. So you actually can only get that by bringing dollars into the country. Luckily, we already did that. I'm going to explain why in a minute, but first, we need to go get some money to be able to buy anything here. Shops like this are all over the city. Anywhere that says OMT is where you can go exchange your money and get the black market exchange rate. And for a bit of perspective, when I was here in 2019, it was fixed at 1500 to the pound. Now it's around 27,000 to the pound. So that's almost 20 times as much Lebanese pounds per $1. And that's just like the hyper inflation the country has been going through. The pound has lost 90% of its value compared to other currencies. But because the dollar is still in short supply here, if you bring dollars into the country, then you can get that black market exchange rate or just really it's just an unofficial rate that everyone here is using. If you paid by card or if you used an ATM, then you'd get the official rate, which is 1,500 to the pound, completely unreasonable and that's what you'd be paying. So for example, I'm gonna show you now in a minute when we go for coffee, how much it would be if you were paying with the real rate compared to the unofficial rate. I think there's quite a lot to understand around this. I'm gonna try and do my best, but I'd say, honestly, go and, go and look into it, go and learn about it, because it's not that easy to explain in one video like this. But what you can know is the hyperinflation here is now worse than Zimbabwe and Venezuela. And it's estimated that around three quarters of Lebanon's citizens are now actually living in poverty. So it's really had a terrible effect here. Lots of people have become homeless just over the last year and a half and obviously can't go travel to other countries and can't do much because the Lebanese pound has essentially become worthless. The government also froze anyone's savings in USD. So even if you had $20,000 in the bank, you can't now withdraw it. The, the banks kind of took it. Lebanese people could see that they have those savings in their bank, but can't touch it and can't get it out whatsoever. If you had savings in Lebanese pounds, you've lost 95% of the value of those savings compared to most other currencies in the world. So you see these buildings that are kind of like half being built, half abandoned projects. That's um, pretty much what most of Beirut looks like right now. You can see this. This is kind of indicative of what the country is going through right now. It's a petrol station that's obviously, I mean, looks like it's not being used anymore and completely crumbled in at the back and they haven't repaired it. Yeah, you can see here. Like, I know a lot of the people here have stopped using the petrol stations because it's become so expensive. So a lot of people are now walking and cycling around literally because they can't afford petrol or gas anymore. And like, like this, here, this is completely abandoned. I don't want to make all of this video too gloom, doom and gloom because a lot of the reason I wanted to come to Lebanon isn't just to show this. I always get out and explore some of the, the incredible nature and the food and the scenery and the people and do all of that too. But I don't feel like I could start this without mentioning that. 
That being said, we are definitely going to get out and see the good side of the country and kind of show you that it's such a cool country to travel around and yet just going through like a bad moment right now. All right, we just stumbled into a farmer's market and I'm going for a homemade Dr. Lemonade. And yeah, I mean, this is just, it kind of shows you that lemonade is amazing, by the way, first of all. But um, it also just kind of shows you how everyone's using the unofficial black market rate. Like that is 30,000 for a lemonade, which if you're still using the official rate, as of today, would be $20 for a lemonade. 1,500 to one times 20. But actually, it's just a little over a dollar because the black market rate is 27,000. Uh, everyone here is using the black market rate. Also, what I just found out is where we're going in a second. This place was born out of the necessity to feed those in the aftermath of the August 4th Beirut port explosion. Some of you may remember the port explosion that happened here in August 2020. And the videos of that I remember seeing at the time were insane. What happened is there was I think it was ammonium nitrate, and they're still investigating the reasons why, but there was this giant explosion that wiped out a large portion of Beirut and left 300,000 people homeless. This place sprung up to feed some of those people and to help out, and it's continued since then in the spirit of Lebanon and Beirut going on and continuing. I'm going to go show you in a second, because we're right next to it, some of the aftermath of the explosion. So you can see this is the aftermath of the explosion. And like I just said, it left 300,000 people homeless, 7,500 people injured, over 200 deaths, and it was also a contributing factor to the economic problems they've had since. So they've kind of just been hit, hit by the currency crisis, hit by COVID, then hit by this, and still you know, trying to recover since. But it's a lot of things at once. If you speak to any Lebanese people, then they'll tell you like it's always been that way things just happen here and you just get on with life keep rebuilding keep going and that's kind of what you feel I think from Beirut this is a monument that's been built from scrap metal you can see like all of these shipping containers are bent out of shape So you can see here, I'm guessing that's the death toll. 144 men, 70 women. Uh, we just kind of walked over here without knowing where we were going. There is a bit of a monument there, but we're also just now on the side of a highway because <laughs> there's not really anywhere else to go here. I'm here next to the Al Amin Mosque right now and this is one of the main biggest squares of Beirut and yet you can see all of the buildings around me are completely boarded up and empty and this is kind of a theme throughout Beirut there are so many buildings that are just shut and closed or with broken windows because of the port explosion or shut down hotels because they've had to withdraw from the country because of the currency crisis and it's a city with so much potential and so much to offer but right now is i mean largely just going through a bad moment but a lot of the buildings are completely abandoned or run down and so i'm sure eventually it will recover but for right now like it, it, it's sad to see and I know this is like such a cool place and I'm, I'm gonna see the rest of it in the other videos and go out and see more of Lebanon and show you how cool it is it's just sad to see what's happened here right now and this is the egg building so funny story actually this has been like this even before the last few years and I actually came in 2019 to a rave here on the, in the in the revolution where everyone, there was DJs up there, there was like people wearing the Viva Vendetta masks and the Lebanese flag everywhere. You could buy beers in there. Yeah, it was really cool. I had to sneak in there, climb up this, and then inside there in this little door, 
was a rave. We're now about two hours outside Beirut and this is where I want to start showing you the rest of Lebanon as well. Because when I first came here I really wanted to see some, some of the rest of the country and now although I've showed you some of Beirut, I want to also show you the countryside and the other things to do. So we're in an area right now called Moktara Valley and this is where I'm going to start a hike and introduce you to one of my friends. Morning. Ready for some morning yoga? Of course. <laughs> Look at this view though. This is how we're starting today. My friend Jad organized this. It's starting off with yoga with this view and then hiking around the valley here. And the best part about today so far is there are so many dogs hiking with us. <laughs> Hello, guys. What happens if you take a golden retriever to yoga? <laughs> Healthy snacks in our event. Awesome, man. I'm Try in. it out. It's foof. It's a. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, bro. It's called foof. It's a turmeric uh, cake. Nice. Thank you very much. Turmeric cake. Uh, just, uh, you it hi works. To eh? You need to say hi to people. Hello, hello. I'm Jad, today's guide and Jordan's uh, great friend. And we're touring in Mukhtara today. Uh, we have 11 waterfalls to discover and a big pond to maybe take a dip. Awesome. Thanks, man. You were also like in the last video when I was here before. You yeah, took me yeah. for like the, the, <laughs> the food. We did an amazing food tour. <laughs> we will do something uh, again. For sure, for sure. For sure. Always, Always food with Jad. <laughs> Let's get around. It's a foof. It's foof. It's foof. It's foof. It's a turmeric cake. Yeah. <laughs> Pick up. You want some? It's foof. It's a good word, isn't it? Mm. Nice, healthy, not too sugary. Yeah, yeah too sweet. Mm. And this is Elias, and this is Sama. Hello, oh, hello, hello, guys hello. from Mokhtara. Oh, uh, Mazrat Shoe. Mazrat Shoe. Mazrat Thank you. Hello, sir. I'm going to be a little bit of a I will uh, explain in English. Every Thank time. you. <laughs> we are going to the pond of the bride. Mm -hmm. And if you're single, you will find a bride in the pond. All you need is a, is a fishing pole. <laughs> so, that's it. And we are. Now beginning the hike. I think it's like a three or four hour hike out here, just exploring. It's really cool, Jad organized this whole thing. And there's like 30 people coming out from Beirut. So if you're ever in Lebanon, I'll, in I'll include the link below. Go and check it out or message him on Instagram and you can do the same sort of thing. This sh should be cool. Jad just told me this is the watermill hike and there's lots of old Roman ruins along it. Apparently this area has a lot of Roman history and a lot of ancient history in Lebanon and obviously this part of the world in general too. Check this out. This is very cool, beautiful. And the dogs are an added bonus. Wow, this is really pretty. 
an old Roman bridge, waterfalls, streams, and we've just started. I think I've said it a few times already, but this is why I really wanted to do Lebanon. Get out and see some of the nature here and get out and just show all of it. Yeah, we need to just keep more organizing more hikes or just doing them ourselves. Yeah. So I love it every time I do. We're on the way, I guess we're going to the lake. El Aru Lake. That's Jordan. Oh doggy, no, don't do it. You got so much to live for. About halfway through the hike and there's this little lake and waterfall with that crystal clear water that we can jump in. I'm sure it's gonna be freezing because it's actually like kind of like spring-ish weather right now, but I'm definitely getting in. I know this is gonna be cold, but it's gonna be worth it. <laughs> oh wow. When I jumped in, I genuinely couldn't breathe for like 10 seconds, like the, the, that is ice cold, it's like an ice bath. So I went in like all my breath went out of my body, but so refreshing. We actually went out last night for Chad's birthday, he invited us to his birthday party. So this is just like an instant day after hangover cure. Really nice, I think I'm about to go bright red, but really cool. Cold buddy. <laughs> All right, guys, your turn. Come on. Yalla, Habibi. Yalla, Habibi. Tested the waters. Well, man. You get in there, boy. Get. I got the tap. Tap. Perfect. <laughs> cool. We are off ski. Yeah, really nice way to get outside Beirut. Only like an hour and a half outside, and you get all of this gorgeous nature. One of the interesting things about Lebanon I've found so far is that it is very small. You can kind of get everywhere in a one to two hour drive and travel around a bit, which is what we're planning to do. But now we're heading back to Beirut. So that was the end of our day and it was time to head on back to Beirut. I can't stress enough how much I fell in love with Lebanon during my time there. Not just the scenery and the nature that you saw in this, but the people, the food, just everything about the country. And it is such a shame that it's gone through such hard times with the currency and other problems, but I'm sure that it will be back again. I, I, all I would say is you need to get to Lebanon to experience it for yourself. And follow along for the rest of the videos.